okay, Trudy. I know where Brady is. Is she okay? She's fine. Where is she? Why didn't you bring her home? Listen to me, Trudy. Just calm down. It's okay. Brady's safe. It's not what everybody thought. Those crazy monks out there had nothing to do with it. It's just some kids who wanted their own baby. So welcome to Series 2, Episode 13 of Conversation League Mountain, a podcast about the tribe. I'm your host, Lance, and joining the podcast panel today is Liz. Hello. Sabine. Hi. And Maggie. Hi. With episode notes done by Matt and myself. So Series 2, Episode 13, the screenplay was done by Nick Doughty. It was directed by John Reed. And the episode synopsis were read out by Sabine. Ebony finally shows her cards, making a deal with the Guardian to deliver Trudy to the Chosen. But the result may not be quite what she bargained for. Back at the mall, Bray's indisposition leads to tensions running high as Lex and Danny battle for the upper hand. And Lex's advice to Ryan leads to a confrontation with Selene. So after playing the long game with the Morats, Ebony identifies a chance of power with the Chosen and makes her move telling Trudy that she knows where Brady is and that she needs to go with her alone in order to get her back. So yeah, panel, how did you react to Ebony showing her true colours here, as well as Trudy's decision to trust her? Trudy should know better. <laughs> Trudy know is so des- desperate. I know, I know in her desperation, she sees nothing other than getting her hands back on her child, right? Having her hands, you know, or having Trudy or Brady with her, which I get, I understand as a mother, absolutely. But it's Ebony. Ebony never does anything for anybody else's, you know, like it's always for a benefit of her own. Um, and Trudy knows this. And uh, but at the same time, like I said, I, I get why she jumped at it. However, Ebony was being very suspicious with the no, we can't tell anybody. No, nobody can know. You have to, you know, it's a secret. You don't come with me now. It's never going to happen. Like, well, what do you mean? What other I need? I need more information. But Trudy and in, in her, you know, desperation and... <sighs> I think she was just willing to risk it. I, I know, I know. And that's the thing is, I get it. The risk, you know, the benefit outweighed the risk in this situation yeah. for Trudy. You're good. She just didn't care, you know, what the out, like what was going to, as long as she was back with her, her baby. Yeah, that, that's the only thing that matters to her right now. You know, getting Brady back, there's not much worse that Ebony could possibly do to her right now because she's already lost her daughter. Right. Yeah. Yeah, she already feels at her lowest. Like, what what else could possibly happen that could be worse than what she's dealing with? She's not thinking about herself. She's probably not even thinking about that. The only only thing that is on her mind right now is being reunited with her daughter. And if Ebony is the means to that, then so be it. It does a good job of showing um, that horrible decision you have to make. Like, imagine, like if you have a loved one who gets kidnapped, law enforcement always tells you that you need to contact law enforcement. You need to keep them in the loop because that is your best chance of getting your loved one back. Even if the kidnappers tell you, do not call the police. Mm-hmm. If you do, we'll kill your loved one, blah, blah, blah. The <laughs> cops will always tell you, statistically, you're better off calling the cops. Do not listen to the kidnappers and their bluff. And so you have these circumstances where somebody, their loved one's kidnapped and the kidnappers contact them and say, bring this money. But if you involve the police, we'll kill your loved one. And it's like, oh, yeah. that's such a hard choice to make because you, the person you have to trust here, you know, and it's like, I'm looking at poor Trudy. She knows Ebony's not trustworthy. She's doubting it the whole time. But it's like, if I don't take this chance and trust her, I may never get my child back and like, that's just not an enviable situation to be in. Like, the worst person on the planet to trust is the only one who can help you get your kid back, you know? And if you just, if you go with your gut and don't listen to her, you could lose your kid, you know? Because what if she's actually telling the truth? And mm-hmm. Or what if she just skips? What if she disappears? What if you go and tell someone, this is what Ebony told me, and then you go to find Ebony and she skipped out because she's like, she was up to something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And now you have no leads. You have to find, you know, you can't find her. And it's like, man, that's a sucky situation to be in. I don't know what choice I would make. I guess I would be like, fine, <laughs> I'm bringing a stick because yeah. I don't trust you. But <laughs> take me to my kid, take me to my kid, you know. To me, it doesn't feel like she had a real choice to make. You know, 
this is her one shot of getting Brady back. The only shots he's had. Yeah. He was taken. Yeah, this, you know, this is the only time that any type of, like, evidence has been shown of any sort, you know, where it seems legit, but at the same time, because it's Ebony, it's like, no, there's no way. There's probably, there's probably something wrong with this, but if she's taking me to my kid, well, I don't care what happens right then. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't help that uh, Ebony mm-hmm. is telling the truth. It's mm-hmm. a half-truth. But she is telling the truth. I, she knows where Brady is. She also knows that, dude, we will scare these people off if we mm-hmm. come traipsing in there with our whole tribe. You know what I mean? And that's not the way we have to go about this if you want to get your daughter. Mm-hmm. And so she's not even lying. And that's what makes it even worse. She's able to be so convincing because she is telling Trudy the truth. She's just, you know, keeping the other half of the truth away from her, you know. Which, from Ebony's point of view, makes sense. Yeah. Oh, of course. I mean... <laughs> It's not like she could go to Trudy with a, hi, I know where your kid is. I'm just going to give you to them. And if you just join them, then you can be with Brady again. You know, it's crazy. If she had said that, I guarantee Trudy would have done it anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah, probably. Um, you know, and, and, and this is something that Ebony is really good at with the half truths. Yeah. She mm-hmm. knows, you know, she knows what information to give to people and what information to withhold. Um, and she's very smart, and she's v- just very good at what she does. Yeah, Trudy absolutely probably would have been like, okay, I guess, let's do it. As long as, I'll I, worry- get, as, long as right. I get Brady back. I'll worry about escaping later. Right. I mean, let me get to my kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, bring me to my kid and then tell Bray, okay? <laughs> right, and that's probably what Trudy would have said. She'd have been like, okay, let's do it. You know, I'm going to get back with Brady. That's fine. Let's do it. You know? Yeah. It's not like any of those mole rats seem to care about her or her kid. Exactly, exactly. And Ebony is the only one that's really, you know, actively, as far as Trudy can see, doing anything. Um, Mm -hmm. The other ones, you know, will start going out to look, which is good, but a little too late, don't you think? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, they're showing. <laughs> yeah, they're showing like a ton of concern now. now. Two, three days later. Now <laughs> that they know that Tysan's safe, the antidote's good. Bray knows the antidote. Okay, now we can worry about this infant. <laughs> yeah. That, that can't find, you know, can't fend for herself. Okay, let's go look. She could be yeah. at the other side of the country. You know. <laughs> <laughs> and and are they really doing it to get Brady back, or are they doing it to show to Bray that? Yeah, we've tried. You know the antidote now. We've tried. We're on well, your good side, thing, right? Is I definitely think that that Ryan and Celine, you know, yeah. are, are, they want to find Brady. You know, yeah, Danny, Danny, she's using this as as a means to get on Bray's good side. You know, like mm-hmm. look, look, I helped. I helped try to find your niece. Like now, will you do what I want you to do? Mm-hmm. Uh, she's definitely bringing that energy. Yeah, like there's no like there's no denying that. You know what? I didn't even see it that way, but now that you mentioned it, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, yeah. Um. How else can you see that? I mean, yeah, like it's the only because she doesn't care about this baby. She doesn't know, nope. not to the extent that she cares about herself. You know, what, I was because was it last week? I was just thinking about what Connor was saying. How how good it would be if like Danny was the only kind of voice of reason. Like, oh, let's go find this this, this helpless baby, and it would have it would have made us like like her a bit more. But now that you've mentioned it in that way, you've actually yeah reminded me. Yeah, she's, she's actually only doing this to get pray. <laughs> She doesn't wow. do anything. Yeah, she doesn't do anything. That's not, she's just like oh Ebony in that aspect. Mm-hmm. And it's no wonder Bray is attracted to her. <laughs> Okay, I, I take back the praise I was just about to give her. I take it right back. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't happen. We see right through you. We see right through you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to help. That's actually really bad, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty horrible. It's like just like with Titan and Bray, you know, using her wily ways. I was like, oh, writers, you're, you're actually letting her do something positive and nice for someone else. It's like, <laughs> oh, actually, no. And, 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 you know, and, and the same too, you know, like she, she could, this is a distraction off of her and what she's currently up to, which yeah. we all know, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like if she's focusing on something else, maybe no one will focus on her about such and such. Yeah. And well, she doesn't want to be in the mall because 
Jack and Allie are asking questions. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is all very self-serving. Danny is a very yes. self-serving <laughs> character and that's why i say she is a lot like ebony and it is Ooh. scary this is more insidious than a fool yeah you're right. i'm suddenly wondering if if she took that videotape is she just looking for an excuse to get out of the mall to get rid of it oh my god it's possible i mean there are so many things at this point it is anything is possible with this girl like I, I think it was that bad, yeah. You know how how Ebony who <laughs> telling you a hater. Hater. I mean, I mean, since we're on the subject, <laughs> <laughs> I, what do you think of her like single-minded, like railroaded justification about the Bill of Rights? Oh, come on. Like, that is absolutely not her reasoning for wanting the Bill of Rights. She wants to, you know, to to set up this this law and this punishment system to make sure that she saves her own butt in the end. You know, like she's got to make sure that whenever whatever comes out and people find out what they find out, that she's not going to be able to be punished in the end. I'm telling you, she is a, such a self-serving individual. I agree that Danny's self-serving. I definitely do agree. There's mm -hmm. tons of evidence to show that many of the things she does are for her own, like, goodwill. But I do feel that this is genuine. Her obsession with the Bill of Rights is trying to right a wrong. She didn't actually commit, but she feels responsible because if her father had come out, I don't know what she thinks he could have accomplished by coming out about the virus, but he clearly wanted to, and he didn't because Danny's life was threatened. And Danny carried that. It's not her fault. She shouldn't have carried it, but she did. So she's obsessed with it. So I do think it is genuine, but I still don't like agree with her whole Bill of Rights and the way she's going about it. And I totally agree. She is self-serving. Everything she's doing is so she can absolve herself of this guilt she carries, even though she so shouldn't carry it. It's not her fault, you know? And Yeah, but come on. Claiming that she's trying to do this to prevent everything from slipping back to the days of power and chaos... I mean, come on, she just wants power. I do. I agree, though. She doesn't I want anyone she, else to have that. I don't think she wants anyone else to grab it. I, again, I agree that she's, you know, wrongheaded in thinking that she's the only person who should have this kind of power. But I do understand what she's saying when she's like, this is our only opportunity to fix everything that went wrong. And if we're not careful, like, it's going to slip through our fingers. So I can see why there's this manic, frantic mm -hmm. energy coming off of her, like, just desperate psychosis coming out of Danny yeah, yeah. because it's like because she sees that power and chaos time as her fault again yeah not, absolutely. not her fault You're right. but she mm -hmm. sees it as her fault that we ever fell into that horrible pit where we were all running for our lives and we were all terrified and here's our chance here's my chance don't you get it Bray this is my chance to fix what is somehow my fault and you're ruining it because you're not paying attention and you're not listening to me. And you're playing chemistry kit with Tyson. And this is my only chance to make it right, Bray. And just forget about it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. That was amazing. I wish you would have had paper to tear up there. I, I know. <laughs> that was so dramatic. <laughs> beautiful. So, like, if you yeah. replace what she's saying to I, this is my chance yes. to fix it, then it's suddenly like, okay, I get why she's so crazy about this, because otherwise her desperation doesn't make sense until you realize mm -hmm. it's all about Danny trying to fix something that she never broke, you know? And yeah. Mm -hmm. And see, I get it. I get why she is so desperate to fix it, you know, why she feels guilty. I understand it. But when she starts yeah. doing the sketchy things that she's doing and, and the oh, power yeah. that she's doing, you know, it, it really negates the fact that she's trying to fix this situation that she didn't even cause. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I wish that they could have gone about it a different way, you know, to make us sympathize with her a little bit more for the situation that she's in. It also shows how, like, um, because she's so obsessed with this idea that she can fix the world, that she's also blinded to the fact that there is no way they can enforce this rule of law. Right. I was thinking but about that. Mm -hmm. She says to Bray, these crazies, they're scary. And she's not wrong. They are. And, and she's like, this is the only thing that can stop them. And I was like, Danny, how? Do you really think these Bill of Rights would have stopped them from kidnapping Brady? <laughs> I hate to break it to you. But there's nothing you could have done about it. They would have done no. it 
anyway. It yes. just would have been illegal for them to do so. That's the only <laughs> difference. And is people that- commit crimes all the time. All the time. And it just shows how blinded she is by thinking that we can return to safety if we have these laws. I'm like, so that's still not going to stop people from doing whatever the frig they want, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they will. The Chosen have proved time and time again that they really don't care what you think is going to happen. You know, like, or right. what you think should happen. Like, if they have set their mind to something, well, that's probably the likely outcome. Um, I mean, even after they pass their Bill of Rights, the Chosen are still like, yeah. oh, that's interesting. Anyway. Oh, that's how, how cute. <laughs> We're still they, taking they over your city. Exactly. It's still ours. <laughs> They're going to ignore it just like they ignored the need for the antidote. Right. So, yeah, I'm like, okay, Danny. I was just waiting for the sonic wine. I'm like, poor Bray. Uh, he looks so tired. And he his, did. his hair is being blown back by the wine of Danny. He was and so <laughs> exasperated, you know, like he was done. He was literally done with that situation. He, at that the point. energy she's <laughs> giving <Yes>. him. <laughs> He's like, nah, man, this ain't cool. These are not the vibes. Not now. What's with the disappointed the spouse energy, Danny? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have had a hard day at work, and this is how what I'm going to come home to. Not even dinner on the table. Are you kidding? No, that's not. Mm. Danny, you messed up. And then just at the, te- the temper tantrum. It was, oh, her face, man. Just screw it. You don't like it. Well, it's like, oh, my drawing isn't cute enough. It's not pretty. You made fun of it. Okay, I'm going to tear it up. Like, she should have just set it on fire. It would have been more dramatic. <laughs> oh, Danny. Poor girl. I can't even, like, feel for her in that aspect. But it's mm-hmm. just, like, it's embarrassing. Like, her... The way that she acts is embarrassing. And I think this is where she differs from from Amber. This is where the characters kind of start veering in different directions, you know? Like, mm. Amber would mm. not have acted that way. There is no way. She'd be like, well, fine. Well, then I'll find someone else to help me figure it out. Right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> whereas mm-hmm. Danny's just like, no, Bray's the only one. He is the only one that I can do this with. Um. And when she didn't get her way, she threw a temper tantrum. Amber, yeah, she just would have been like, okay, cool, I'll, I'll, I'll get I'll someone else. I'll do it without else. you. Yeah, like, we'll, we'll figure this out uh, some to other people. <laughs> like, delegation, you know what I mean? Like, she understood that, whereas Danny's, I need your attention. And maybe it's because she was an only child. I don't know. <laughs> Like, Danny also has an antagonistic energy about her that doesn't mm. help. Like, she can say things that make a lot of sense, but she always says it as if she's in the middle of an argument with you. Yes. And she yeah. needs to, and that's a, that affects people when you're talking to someone. Like, Bray comes to her room to see how her day has gone. He's a t- He's very tired, but he's like, how was your day? You know what I mean? What did you have to do today? And he's coming in to check on her. And notice the energy she's giving back to him immediately, as though he's yeah. done something wrong. And it's like, what is Bray supposed to do with that energy that she's throwing at him as if they had a fight earlier, but he wasn't participating in that fight. Right. He's aware of the fight. He just came into it like, what the frick did I do? I could have just gone straight to bed. I want to because I'm tired, but I'm checking in on you. Of all people in my tribe, I'm checking in on you. And she immediately mm. is coming at him. And she comes at people like that a lot. She always has that energy with them. And it's just, it does make her an unlikable character. Because you're just like, this isn't, you're making sense. But this isn't how you talk to people. This isn't how you get them on board with you, you know. And especially if you're supposed to be in charge, this is not the energy you have with people that you want to listen to you, you know. And that is a difference between her and Amber. Mm Because Amber didn't carry an antagonistic energy with her. Her, her tone was always very sensible unless there was something yeah. truly upsetting her. And right. Since we don't know what's upsetting Danny, we're just like, where is this energy coming exactly. from? What is the problem? Exactly. Mm-hmm. exactly. There was an interesting comment on the YouTube channel um, that says, like, Danny should be focusing on the infrastructure of the city rather than the laws. Like, do you agree or not with that sentiment? I mean, I, I the infrastructure def- it definitely should be focused on. Um, but right now, like, how are you going to get, you know, the manpower or the means to do that within the city without a set of rules for people to follow, I guess? Like, how do you get people to fall in line to make things happen? You know? I don't think you can do either 
until you actually sit down with these people in the city and find out what it is they need done. Yeah. What is important yeah. to them? What they mm -hmm. want to see in their city. Because you can make up all kinds of rules, but if they're not appropriate to the situation, if these aren't rules that people are actually concerned about, they're not going to matter. And if you yeah. set up infrastructure that isn't actually going to help anybody, again, what's the point? They're, she's missing the vital step. Sit down and talk to these people and find out what it is they want to see. Because if you're actually working towards what someone else wants, they are more likely to help you get it done. Yeah. You know, if you tell someone, I'm bringing you 17 balloons tomorrow, no questions asked. But what the frick? Why would they care if they don't want the balloons? You know, if they're like, mm -hmm. yeah, that's nice. Um... I don't need any balloons. It's actually kind of inconvenient for me. But if you tell someone who's having a birthday party, I'm bringing you 17 balloons. I just got to figure out how to get them here. They're going to help you get the 17 balloons to yeah. their house because yeah. they mm -hmm. need them and they want them. So they're going to be like, oh, here, let's work together. My friend Jose has a truck and blah, blah, blah. And that's what's missing here. You, The law and the infrastructure isn't going to help if you don't know what these people want. And if, if you don't get them what they want, they're not going to help you get it there. And no, so no one's going to obey the law. No one's going to help you build this infrastructure. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't even think they're actually near any way of building an infrastructure. No, and they're not. You could be like, hey, someone could be like, we really need a playground. We really need a safe place for the younger mm -hmm. kids to play. And it's like, okay, you found out a bunch of people want to work on that. You know how much easier it's going to get to vo get volunteers to work and clean up this playground, create a safe place that people can go. But that's because you found out that's what they freaking wanted. You know? yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Like, Absolutely. okay. Like, Jack is actually trying to come to Danny and tell her, could you put a law in there about stealing? And she's not even yeah. willing to listen to him. Mm -hmm. Like, this is something no. he's concerned about because people are stealing here in the mall. And she's like, sorry, get out of my face. These are my rules. <laughs> <laughs> These are the ones I'm concerned about, Jack. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Stealing is not thing. on here. He's like the one person who actually <laughs> wanted to help her. <laughs> He's like, I got a rule you could put on there. And she's like, um, that would make me a criminal. So yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> that would incriminate myself. I'm good, thanks. <laughs> it's not gonna be in my bill of rights. <laughs> Inconvenient. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just don't know how that couldn't have already been in her Bill of Rights. It should be what? Like it was. If, if stealing is not in her Bill of Rights, what is? <laughs> well, she clearly wasn't around for a while trial. Can, can we get a list of, you know, a copy of these Bill of Rights, please? We need to know what we're working with here. <laughs> really messed like, up that the person writing them is clearly already breaking them. <laughs> Like, she's like, oh, maybe that if I write them, then I, like I said, if she writes them, she can't get in trouble. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. she's like, they're not passed yet. So, I mean, like, we're just making sure that, you know, she, she makes, she's out of trouble. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with stealing. Sharing is caring. Danny is a corrupt politician. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She can be bought off, but only by herself. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm dogging on her bad this episode. I know. I love it. Thank mm -hmm. you. I can't help it. Her attitude this episode, I just don't have the time for it. It is. It sucks. It's like dealing with, like I said, like with the five year old that, you know, you didn't mm -hmm. like, the, the, did, someone didn't like their drawing and she's, they're like, I don't want your drawing. Okay. And then she tears it up. Like, <laughs> her body language and everything just cracks yes. me up. She clenches so many fists in this episode. I wonder if they instructed her like that on it with a, okay, imagine a five year old and just act that way. Right. Oh, and again, God. for me, it just doesn't work because I'm spending the whole time like, I don't know where this is coming from. I'm just like, yeah. what is with this high level of irritation, Danny, that you have? It is so much higher than it ought to be. You know, if you're really, you're this upset about these Bill of Rights. Like, what are you upset about, Danny? Are you, it's like she's upset about everything. You know, and again, it'll all make sense later. But for now, you're just stuck. Like, what is your problem? <laughs> what are right. you so pissed off at? Right, and, and everyone. Uh, and it makes sense though to kind of set her character up to be disliked. Like, I kind of get that. But then to have us suddenly have to redeem it afterwards, like, it just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Like, it's not like, oh, okay, so it's this isn't your fault, but you did all of these things. Like Very you true. acted this way, but now it's cool. It's great, you know. Like, no, that doesn't work for me. 
Like, if you're going to set her up to be disliked, then set her up to be disliked. You know, they set Trudy's mm-hmm. character up perfectly for the way that her character goes, you know, throughout the show. Like, all of it makes sense for who she is. But we, with Danny, it, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I wonder if, it, if at this point they knew she was leaving as well. And they just figured, let's make her dislike me. I mean, we're not even halfway through the show yet. I think it's yeah, too yeah. soon. It's too soon. I, yeah. Oh, we are I not even halfway like through saying. yet. Yeah, there's no way. I think at this point, it was she's the replacement. There was no idea that she would not continue mm-hmm. or that Beth would come back. So, yeah. Maybe they just figured we'll be able to redeem her later. You know, right, she, and that's- they assumed that once she was no longer under this kind of stress, that she would be able to show that she's actually a really I, great it, person. It, and yeah, yeah, it didn't work for me though. I'm with no, you. No, that's what I'm saying. It, it, it didn't. Work didn't for me. Yeah, no, it didn't. It, I still thought about all these things, and I'm like, you still are this person. Just because you're no longer in danger of whatever doesn't mean that your actions can be forgiven. You still did all of this. It's like saying the same thing. Like I said with Ebony, Ebony does a lot of crazy crap, you know. But she'll p- she does pull through in a pinch for the mall rats. But that doesn't forgive mm-hmm. her for all of the things that she does. Right. But it makes her more likable. Exactly. Just, well, for but... some people it does, but I mm-hmm. think it's just because there's more time given to Ebony, and even yeah. as a villain, she's a likable villain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that does make a difference. You know, it's like she's yeah. good at being an antagonist. So you still enjoy watching her. Um, yeah. You no, know, you're like, I know she's not a good person, but man, she's so fun to watch. You right. Know? And we expect it from her. It, it's it's who she is. Like, that's what we expect her to do. Like you said, we don't really know Danny. We don't know who this mm-hmm. person is other than she's bossy and she likes things to be her way. She does have this sketchy behavior, but. No, I, th- I think they could have redeemed her if the ending of season two had been slightly different or even if they just brought her back after that they could have found a way if they wanted to i think they could have but i i guess but it does feel like at the by the end of season two they were just tired of danny yeah i don't know why i'm just this is me speculating i may not this may not be true but it just kind of felt like they had already made their decision that they didn't want to do anything with her um because they didn't do much with her in the back half of season two and um and yeah, I think it's possible by the time season two ended, they'd already decided they didn't want to bring Danny back. She's er- unceremoniously nicked out, like in one of the last scenes of the finale. Mm-hmm. And we see her again in, in the beginning of season three. No, mm-hmm. we don't. No, we don't. For- oh, you're right. Yeah, okay. She's just I'm, gone. And- I'm thinking a different episode is the finale. Yeah. Sorry. No, um, I don't know. I'm just speculating that they, yeah, I agree that they could have done more. I, I think it would have been good for her character to come back in season three, but I don't know what they were going, what was going through their mind. And from what I've heard through the grapevine mm-hmm. and the actress, she wasn't handled very well when they decided to let her go. So it's trauma, tea, some tea oh, being spilled yeah. back there. Mm. Trudy, Trudy, do you have a minute? No. I'm sorry, not right now. I just need some time to think, you know, by myself. You all right? I'm just worried about Brady. I know. Do you want to talk about it? No! I have told you I just want everyone to leave me alone, okay? Okay, I've been putting off. (laughs) (laughs) From one dislikable (sighs) character to, (laughs) to a dislikable couple? Let's briefly. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Celine and Ryan. Let's do it. Okay, with her mm. anxieties over her relationship with Ryan, bringing about the return of her eating disorder, Celine tries to speak to Trudy in private. However, Trudy is desperate to get out of the mall untraced and snaps at her, driving her away. Um, but yeah, what I want to focus on, panel is like, do you appreciate um, Celine's content attempts throughout this episode to try and reach out to Trudy for help? Yes. I do, because mm. Trudy helped her in the, the first time. You know, Trudy was yeah. the, one that, the one that was there for her in, in that time, and she realized, okay, I, I'm, I'm in trouble. I need help, and, and maybe I can help Trudy by distracting her. You know? Um, I, I think it, it was nice to still see that Celine, even after everything, you know, like she knew that if she needed help, Trudy would be there for her, but maybe she just chose the wrong time. You can, you can even see that in Trudy's mm-hmm. eyes with a, okay, Celine's hurting, I want to help her, but no, I can't, because my daughter comes first. 
yeah, I did. I did like the little nod back to that part of their friendship. Poor Trudy, though, you definitely saw it too. You know, like she's mm -hmm. like, I, I know she she needs help right now. I can see that she's struggling as well, and um, she just it's one of those moments where she was overstimulated and she couldn't take in any more. You know, she was at her end. There was no more that she could bring in emotionally. So she couldn't help Celine. And she simply did not have the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, this was her one shot to get her little girl back. Mm -hmm. That's it. Done. Yeah. You know? Celine's problems are Celine's problems at that moment. Yep. yep. And, and she knew that she had to snap and she had to be mean to mm -hmm. get Celine to leave her alone. Yeah, I don't fault her for, snap, for snapping because she needed to do that. Mm hmm. Um, oh yeah, and this later leads to um, a scene later on where Ryan embarrasses Celine in front of the tribe while trying to follow Lex's advice to man up. He subsequently discovers her binge in the sewers, and after talking to each other, they realise that they are both anxious about sex, having no experience of it, and agree to do it only when it feels right for the two of them. Um, so yeah, panel, what did you think of Ryan and Celine's reconciliation? Finally. Uh, yeah, not only finally, it's like, this is why you, communication is important, you know? Like, I don't know how Celine, I really don't know how Celine assumed that Ryan had already, you know, lost his virginity. Like, he doesn't seem, like, even though he hung out with, you know, with Lex, like, that doesn't mean anything. You could see how nervous he was. You could see, like, how did she not know him well enough to infer that he was also just as, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. It's what annoys me about Celine. She expects Ryan to pick up on everything. All of her emotions, you know? Like, to, to read her but, mind sometimes. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm just going to say one thing. I'm just going to say one thing in her defense. Ryan saved her from a brothel. I know, but he didn't know it was a brothel. And I'm assuming no, but he told her that. Like, he didn't know what he, you know, what he was there for. Like, that's how naive he is in yes, that department. We, we know that, but he never made that clear to Celine. Well, I guess you're right. We never saw it, but we also don't know what happened. She probably you know? assumed that that was what he was there for. You're right. You're right. Maybe I, that, maybe that is the case. That's the one defense I can think of. Now, Celine makes a lot of assumptions um, mm -hmm. about gender stereotypes and gender norms, and she that's so on brand for her. Um, mm -hmm. It's one of the, it's so. It's, I like that she was being so honest about it, and when it's like, yeah, that makes so much sense that Celine would just make that assumption about Ryan. In the same way, she just assumes that it's the guy who makes the move, and if he doesn't, then he's not into you, and blah blah blah. She makes a lot of weird messed up assumptions with a lot of her closeted misogyny about men and women and how they should behave and you know she never thought to ask um amber about sex because in her eyes amber wasn't a sexual being because she didn't act interested in the boys and yeah. so in Celine's eyes that means oh she guess she's just not into guys you know you know, you know what i mean and so that's just very Celine. and i agree that i i really don't like that Celine has that stereotypical you need to meet all of my needs you have to understand all of my feelings and my moods and you need to pick up on every little hint about where i am but i don't have to show you the same effort yeah. and not just ryan but she can be that way with everybody oh, you yeah. know mm -hmm. um, and so i was just like um i don't have a ton to say about this i'm happy they've resolved their issues it's one of the few things i really like about ryan and celine that when they finally get around to it they will resolve their issues um, I can't fault him for the lack of communication because I was in a long-term relationship for 16 years and communication was a very difficult for us. So oh, I, yeah. can't, I can't judge her for that. Um, but yeah, it's annoying. It's very annoying. And it does at least give the message to a young audience how important communication is with your partner. Mm -hmm. See how fast Ryan Celine could have solved this if they just talked to each other. Yeah, so, absolutely. You know? absolutely. You know, just taking the time to listen to what the other was saying. Uh, instead of they were just like subtle hints, you know what I mean? But she could tell, like, how could she not tell that he was just uncomfortable? Right. But I get her, I get, but that's the thing too, is how does she not know that he's just not uncomfortable because he doesn't find her attractive? Right. Like, as, mm -hmm. you know, and like, it would have been solved that. if she had just told him and he had yep. just told her and, and said they had to spend days all stressed and upset. And yep. All she had to say was, you feel like you don't want me, you know? And 
look, bam, done. <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, I wasn't I judging didn't... Celine for not communicating. It's just is, you know, communication is incredibly important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We judge ourselves, you know, yeah. when we look back, we look in hindsight in our relationships and we're like, ah, oh, if I could have just communicated that to my partner. Um, and then we go through periods where it's like, we don't know what we're supposed to be communicating to them because we haven't figured it out for ourselves. What the heck is even mm-hmm. wrong? We don't know what we're upset about. We don't know what we want. And so we can't communicate it to them. And of course, later, hindsight's twenty twenty, we'll be like, that's what it was. Now I understand what I was going through. And if only mm-hmm. I could have said that to my partner, everything would have been fine. But I couldn't because I didn't know what the heck I was doing. <laughs> so. Yeah. And like, as far as like Ryan humiliating or humiliating Celine in front of everyone, he knew it was wrong as soon as he opened his mouth. Like as soon as mm-hmm. he started speaking, he's like, I have messed up. You know, but that just goes to also show that he still wants Lex's approval. Mm-hmm. You know, no matter no matter how much Lex has screwed him over and done him wrong, he still wants Lex think that he's cool. I guess I don't. I it just it. He knew. You know what I mean. And he probably felt so bad about it. Um, Lex and Lex laughing in the background. Mm-hmm. I have a few words about that, but I can't say them on here. <laughs> So you know, I thought it was weird. I felt it was more humiliating for Ryan than it was for yeah. Celine. Because like mm-hmm. I can understand Celine being like, What the frick did you just say to me? Like that right. doesn't even make sense what you just said to me. Yeah. But if anything, it seems like everyone's laughing at Ryan because mm-hmm. he sounds mm-hmm. like an idiot. Like what yes. he says to Celine barely makes sense, especially in the context of her coming in looking for Trudy. And he's like, You don't need Trudy. This is-. and you're like, I feel like everyone's laughing at Ryan. Because yeah. he sounds so dumb. Mm-hmm. Like, what yes. the fuck did that even mean, Ryan? And I thought Celine's reaction was a bit over the top. I would have been like, I can understand her being like, wow, you sound like a moron and storming off. Like, you are so unhelpful for me right now. I don't know what your problem is. But I didn't get her being humiliated. Because I didn't feel like what he said was humiliating to her. Just It just yeah. made him look like the idiot. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely, you know. But I guess with all of her current emotions about the yeah, situation, okay. her relationship okay. with Ryan, you know. Um, but it absolutely was humiliating for him. And like I said, to have Lex laughing in the background and to have, you know, Dal laughing. And and Lex knew exactly what he set Ryan up for. He knew it. Yeah, of course. And mm-hmm. it just goes to show that he still doesn't care. He doesn't mind getting a laugh at anyone's expense. Yeah. And it's still sad. Because it just it shows that same character, you know, that mm-hmm. he was progressing away from. But it's still there. And it shows you that Lex is still who Lex was. Mm-hmm. I do have a theory about Celine. It's been knocking around in my head all week. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, uh... I just want to throw it by you guys. Now, I know this is going to sound really weird, but just hear me out. Oh, boy. I think Celine is a narcissist. Like, I know when we think of narcissists, we think of people who are obvious, like mm-hmm. Lex or Ebony, who are so obviously only think of other, uh, think of themselves and, you know, discard the feelings of others. But there's a whole different side to being a narcissist that I feel like Celine meets the criteria in truth, most narcissists are like painfully insecure. They're perfectionists. They're obsessed with this perfect life that they're trying to craft. They try to craft the perfect um, relationship with other people. And whenever life doesn't meet that expectation, they tend to have meltdowns. And um, not every narcissist is dangerous or out to hurt you or anything like that. But I was just thinking about Celine's behavior and her actions and how everything seems to stem from everything Celine does is for her benefit. Mm-hmm. Everything. Yeah. Even when she's caring for other people, she's only doing it because it makes her feel good. Yeah. It makes her feel mm-hmm. necessary. It makes her feel needed. And I just, I'm like, you know, it, for example, just that scene in the, in the cafe, it's humiliating to Ryan. He's the one who looks in, like an idiot. But Celine makes everything about her. You know, Mm -hmm. everything is about her. When Trudy's daughter is missing, Celine is upset because Trudy doesn't need her right now. Trudy sent her back to her room and Celine goes back there and Ryan's not there and she's sobbing. It's all about her. 
um, it's why she can so easily not care what's going on with the kids, not care about their well-being. It's why she can so easily do terrible things to people and not considering how that affects them. It's why she expects perfection from Ryan and never gives it back to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, you absolutely are making a mm-hmm. lot of sense. I was now. just thinking about all of her friendships, all of her relationships, the way she reacts to people when they let her down, the way she lies to herself and other people and changes the narrative of what happened. I'm like, my gosh, Celine is a narcissist. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. She's the center of her universe and everything revolves mm-hmm. around the way she needs it to be. You know, and it's what she has nothing filling her. She requires everybody else to fill her. She's like one of those little balloon things at a car car lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. It needs constant Mm -hmm. air flowing into it to keep it buoyant because otherwise it deflates. So how does she fill herself? She takes care of other people. It makes her feel special. Makes mm-hmm. her feel very, you know, needed. So she desperately mm-hmm. takes care of Brady. She likes having, you know, Bray's approval. But she also doesn't care about other people's genuine feelings, you know? And I was like, wow. And I, I've been chewing on it all week, just, you know, working on that argument. I was like, yeah, I'm convinced more and more she is a narcissist. There's no argument. No argument at all. The theory is now canon. Mm-hmm. Like they're absolutely, and you see it too, like with with Trude or with the Bray, Trudy, and Celine thing in season one. Like she genuinely does not care how what she's doing with Bray is affecting Trudy until it affects her negatively. Yes. She mm-hmm. doesn't care what happens with yeah. Trudy because she doesn't like Trudy, and I'm not even judging mm-hmm. her for that. But no, me neither. But it's just you notice that she doesn't care about leaving Trudy to die nope. until she has to face the consequences. Uh-huh. You know, and she lived and now she's got to face her every single day. So now she's got to face the fact that she just left her there. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. she, the way she turns on Bray, Bray hadn't done anything. He did exactly what Celine asked him to do. He chose and he chose her. And Celine has to spin it as to somehow Bray is the one who made everything bad between the two of them. And it's his fault that Trudy did what she did because it made Celine feel bad. It's all about Celine's feelings. Yep, it is. You know, mm-hmm. It is. And that's why I said, like, she knows, she can see that it makes, that every, the situation is making Ryan uncomfortable. But she's not capable of it. But she's not stopping. Yes. And she's not, well, she's not stopping to ask him, hey, what's wrong? Like, what's really going on? Sit down and talk to me. It's not until she lashes out and, yeah, and she's upset that they are able to discuss it. He's able to be like, I'm sorry, you know, like, it. Ah, you're right. You are you are so right. Celine is a narcissist. And again, I don't say that in a bad way because I don't. Yeah. I, we have a stigma against people who are narcissistic. Um, but the truth is, they're not all evil. They're not all terrible. It's just a personality disorder. And I'm like, yeah, she isn't the person you think of, but she nails all of the the check marks on mm-hmm. what a true narcissist is. You know, they can have a great desire to be good and help people, but it's always for a very selfish reason yeah it's because it makes them feel good yeah Mm -hmm. it's and it's like no wonder she deflates so hard when she's not being filled up by other people making her feel good right she gets you know she gets raised high and then dropped down as soon as that attention disappears oh brady brady oh my baby Not a problem. I was wrong about you. Outside of the mall, in a secluded area of woodland, a grateful Trudy is finally reunited with Brady and admits to Ebony that she was wrong about her. Only, of course, to be immediately surrounded by the Chosen as Ebony reveals her true allegiance. So yeah, Pano, what did you think of this scene and the rollercoaster of emotions that Trudy must have been going through? That poor girl. That poor yeah. girl. Feel bad. Evil scheming witch. Oh, that wasn't the word I, I used. I hated Ebony so much in that moment. Uh, it's that that's that f- small moment where she knew that Ebony's tricky, and she she knows that she lies, but she just gave her that benefit of the doubt for that like one second. Yeah. She's like, "Thank you, thank you," but then it's like taken straight away from her. And it's like, oh, it just, I, feel so know, sorry. I feel like that happens so much with Trudy too. <laughs> You know, mm-hmm. so it's kind of on par for her storylines. Um, 
it, it makes a lot of sense coming from Ebony. Uh, however, she didn't seal the deal beforehand, you know, because um, <laughs> obviously she didn't get anything in return. I don't even know what she was supposed to get. Was was she supposed to rule with them? I think. Oh, <laughs> Ebony! You want to talk? Um, this I, is, I you know, what's going on? Ebony really messed up here. This is a uh, this is a bad plan, little lady. Uh, mm hmm. Mm. Do you seem to forget? He said it straight up. You have nothing we need. Exactly. You know? We don't need you. And, like, she literally gave up the one thing he'd asked for. So what does he need you for anymore, Ebony? <laughs> she should have taken Trudy somewhere away from, you know, the chosen mm -hmm. city and then been like, okay, I have her now. Now what are you going to oh, get me for her? But so blinded mm -hmm. by her want for power. Oh yeah, my god. She did not use <laughs> the brain in this. Ebony, you are too good for this. Come on. Ebony is so used to guys doing what she wants. Yeah, but she should know better than that with Jaffa. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm still, you know, trying to to get over the fact that she knew right where they were and she knew exactly who had the baby and like um, when we knew that, you know, we knew she wasn't stupid. She knew who the chosen were. Mm -hmm. But it just not, I'm I'm not surprised that Joff I mean that she underestimated him because Ebony has shown that she will only absorb as much useful information about you as is useful to her in the moment or like what she's interested in. Mm -hmm. And she will ignore anything else that she considers unuseful. Like so for example, when she Backs them all, looking for the antidote. She ignores the magazine shop because, to her, she she needs to prove. You know, she likes to pretend that she doesn't care about education because it's a reputation. Even though the discs that were important for all the information Jack got, he hid them in the magazine shop. You know, so she overlooks things that could be useful to her. Mm -hmm. Certain points in time, I guarantee she overlooked Jaffa when he was a little. Probably. Girl, you know what I mean? And. She, because she is so taken aback by his conviction mm -hmm. and his power over the chosen, she keeps hitting him up with stuff, thinking, "Oh, I know what these guys want," and she's wrong every time. She thinks they want the antidote formula. She thinks um, that she they just need a stronger leader for Zoot. She thinks she can impress them with the fact that I was with Zoot. I learned at his feet and yeah. blah, blah, blah. She keeps miscalculating them. She never really got to know who Jaffa was and what, mm -hmm. how the kind of crazy this kid operated mm -hmm. on. She thought she did. And she was like, oh boy, you know, just that, that competition with the coal. Like oh, yeah. she oh, was yeah. not prepared for this level of crazy. No. You know? Yeah. And so I'm not surprised. She she probably wrote him off. Oh, yeah, no, I'm not surprised by it either. Like, I knew the Guardian was up to some... It was, I, I could tell, you know, that he was this crazy person, that he had it together. You could tell by just the way that his followers followed him. <laughs> like, yeah. unwavering. You know, I'm like, Ebony, this is... this. You're walking into failure. Mm -hmm. There's no yeah. way that you are going to walk out of this with anything at all. Like, you are... You... Why did you do this? Like... Yeah, she definitely underestimated the crazy. She's she's so sure of herself. Yes, she is. And just thinking that by looking a certain way, acting a certain way, people, and especially guys, will automatically do what she wants. And yes, she just never thought that these religious people were so into, into Zoot would even for a moment consider someone else than her. Especially since her worship of Zoot never went that deep. Yeah. yeah. She never actually thought of him as a god. No. He didn't actually like form a religion around him. He was a tool to her own power. That's all he ever was. Yep. No, she lifted up his name to keep the Locos following her. But that's all he was to her. And she's not prepared for these guys. Mm. She, she's just thinking that Jaffa's doing the same because, I mean, in the beginning when Zoo had just gone missing, she called herself the priestess. They were shouting priestess power at her, and she thinks that's what the Guardian's doing. Right. <laughs> and it's He's like, pretending. Uh, He's playing pretend. It's a little deeper for this guy. Yeah. Yeah, he made up the religion, but I mean, he wrote books on this religion. That's right. how into the game. He is. He's deep undercover, Ebony. <laughs> he's got a loophole for everything. Sorry, little lady. He's, he's committed, honey. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know, I, I always love how Ebony's like balls that she that she could just walk up to another tribe and like, yeah, I'm taking over. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm yeah. <laughs> I just love that about her. It's wrong, but I just love it. And she's yeah. alone too. That's the best part. She's like, I don't need anybody. I got this. <laughs> no, honey, you don't. Sorry. <laughs> That confidence is like, yeah. The, yeah. It's arrogance. That it is, is that pure is arrogance. <laughs> yeah. You could bottle that and sell it at me. <laughs> where do you think she gets that from? Like, where, where It feels like it's more than just being in the locos. I don't know. It, I feel like no, I think it's something she always had. Exactly. Hmm. I think it's kind of type of personality that she's always had. And you can kind of see it later on, you know, with the relationship with her sisters. Like, she's always been the one that's in charge. It's It's Ebony's way. Um, she probably always called the shots. Ebony developed swagger at a very young age. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, clearly, yeah. I think the older she got, she realized that this was a benefit to her to fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. If you pretend you're the one in charge, people will treat you like you're the one in charge. You know, and if you enter a room like you own it, you own the attention of everyone in that room. You know, and she became very comfortable with that. So I'm sure mm-hmm. some of it had to do with her upbringing, lack of attention in very important areas. So there's a craving for that attention, just all kinds of things going on with that <laughs> psychology. But oh yeah, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she she definitely the locos didn't give her the swagger. She had it from day one, mm-hmm. and, and we'll see that in the next episode as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it's it's done to cover up her insecurities. Like, it's just a defense mechanism. It's her yeah. mask. So she can move about the world. It's a useful mask, though. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Every ma- Most masks we have, they're, they're not mm-hmm. meant to be evil. They're meant to protect us, you know? That leads us to our final thoughts of the episode. So, having been unexpectedly taken by the Chosen on with Trudy, Ebony attempts to seize power from the Guardian by emphasizing her links to Zoo. But this ends badly when the Guardian challenges her to a test of endurance, which she fails. So yeah, panel, first of all, what did you make of that creepy fire challenge? Bad okay. act. It was perfect. Yeah, I think it was very fitting. Knew she was going to fail. Knew he was going to be like, this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you can see him there just looking so confident. Like he's... Yeah, like he's like, okay, this, this is cool. <laughs> he's acting I, I... like he's holding ice cubes. Yeah! <laughs> Such a great moment that tells you what. Okay, you remember season one? We see, we meet Ebony. We meet her in the cage, and we learn everything we need to know about this girl. Okay, just from the conversations mm-hmm. we have with her in the cage, and how spectacular that is. This is where you get to learn what you need to know about Jaffa. It's like this is what you're dealing with. This is the mm-hmm. mentality of this person. Okay. <laughs> You're taking your biggest antagonist from season one and pitting her against your new antagonist of season two. You've upped the stakes of the psychology of your bad guy. This isn't someone who just wants power in some shallow rudimentary sense, you know? And it's so, for Ebony to fail under that weight, it really empowers who Jaffa is. It elevates how scary he is and what a, Mm -hmm. like his threat level. So it's like, oh my gosh, next to him, Ebony just... She's small beans. She becomes Lex, you know? And <laughs> and I love the acting of that scene. No. Mm-hmm. Like, Meryl's just like, I'm not going to be able to do this. Like, she's looking at him like, how is he doing right. this? Yeah. This hurts. Mm-hmm. How is he holding that and acting like it's... And the stone expression on his face. Like, mm-hmm. this is nothing. You know? My, my God empowers me. I can do this. And then there's Trudy's expression at the end of it. Like, what did I end up in? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I was searching for comments, but I didn't see no, no one really mentions it. But it, it is really well acted. I, I loved it. I was like, oh, yeah. Really and it definitely it. shows you, okay, this is a character that I really need to worry about. <laughs> like, and, so and far, so yeah, he's been creepy, but no, this is next level. Like, yeah. Trudy's in trouble. Yes. <laughs> and for once, you see them using Meryl's length to their advantage in this. Because next to her, the Guardian seems like 10 feet tall. He does. Mm-hmm. He does. It, he casts a long advantage. shadow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a great scene. And it really lets you know what we're in for now. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, man, we thought, we thought it was bad before. But we were really just dealing with thugs and street kids. 
this is psychological. This is bigger than that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we're going to do. These guys really are scary. They're dangerous. And we don't know what treats to throw at them to make them leave us alone. We got nothing. You know? They're smart and they are organized, and that's what is terrifying. They are so well mm-hmm. organized. And what they want is irrational to yes. our common mind. Like, we can't even give them what they want because it doesn't even make sense to us. Right, so there's you know, mm-hmm. like, like, come on, we can't even sue for peace with these guys. We nope. can't parlay with them. They're crazy, you know? Though there is one scene you guys will love when Ebony stumbles upon them and they're, zo- they're chanting around Brady, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Brady's like, ah, she's kind of crying. And I was thinking, Brady's like, enough with the, ch- can you get back to the humming? I liked the humming. Can you stop <laughs> chanting at me? Stop mm-hmm. chanting at me. <laughs> Poor baby. When she went and Trudy grabs her, <laughs> listen to Brady babble. It's like, she's like, mom, where were you? Right. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> As soon as they put through Ebony at uh, Trudy's feet. Now, I, I like Ebony, but all I can think is Trudy, get rid of her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, for real, I was like, do it. Get rid of her. Do it now. This is your chance. Yes. Get rid of her. No one can blame you. No one could fault you for this. Just no let her go. No one could fault you for this. No one. Oh, man. She should have oh, done think it. Think of the strength in her position she would have had if she'd done that. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, think about what that would have showed the Guardian, what that would have showed the other members of the Chosen. Like, if you give me a decision to make, oh, I will make it. It's just going to be what I make, yeah. I do I do wonder what that would have done for she and Jaffa's relationship going forward. Because Jaffa recognizes Rudy is someone he can manipulate and he yeah. can abuse. And that's what he mm-hmm. does. He notices the weaknesses in her character, which he, kindness, he sees that as a weakness. And he takes advantage of that and uses it against it and abuses her going forth to control her. But what would he have done if Trudy had shown that she was capable of being ruthless? Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah. I think he would have been a lot more cautious with Trudy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Then he probably would have tried to rule with her. He would have recognized. Instead of over her. I can't overstep and I can't abuse her because she has it in her to get rid of me. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah, but at the same time, though, that could also be like this is what she's capable of. I need to watch her. That's true. He mm-hmm. could have made her seem like a bigger threat to him. Yes, exactly. And we already see what he does, you know, to threats. Yeah. So it's just yeah. interesting. I just thought I was yeah. like that oh, would yeah. have been. I would have liked to see the look on his face if she had said, "Kill her." Me too. She's a, she's me a threat too. to me, and she's been a threat. Her head. Like would Let he have go. fell in love right there? Would we have seen heart <laughs> eyes? <laughs> Oh, he would have goodness. worshipped her for a bit. That's what I mean. Like, the hard eyes right then. That's it. He's done for. Mm-hmm. And then he would have had to off himself for blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. It's what, the, it's what the book says. <laughs> the book says the Supreme Mother must be pure. <laughs> That's what the book says. He wrote she can it. have blood on her hands, but she's got to be pure. Okay. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he wrote <laughs> it. So if he, if he causes her to mess up. She suits women. She can do things suit would do. It's also an insight to how Jaffa um, uses his cult to spread cr- uh, the, the blame around. You'll notice mm-hmm. that Jaffa rarely makes decrees where his hands are the ones that have to be dirty. Yeah. He gives it mm-hmm. up to other people. You know, He puts them in charge of taking someone's life. Even if he decreed that this person had to lose their life, he will often force someone else to do it. Yep. So he doesn't want Ebony around. He happily Mm-mm. off Ebony, and he easily could. He did, it's not like he need to convince anyone there that she needs to go, and yet he pushes it on to Trudy as a test, you know, so he can test her mettle. What is she about? How am I, you know, how will I be able to control her? How will I be able to utilize her? And you'll notice going forward, he does the same thing. He will say, this person should be put to death, but you never see Jaffa doing it. You know, he always makes sure he gets someone else to do it, and it's how you... Um, spread the blame. It's that mob mentality and everybody feels like they can't change or leave this situation because their hands are dirty. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, he may also be trying to give her that, you know, you have a little bit of control right here in the situation. Here's the control that I'm giving you. Um, Make her feel more at ease. You know, like, because we don't know what happens after season, you know, after season two. Like, well, as far as, like, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to say, yeah. you know, um, after all of this, anyway, I guess is what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, as far as what 
she learns or what he teaches her or you know um she is a supreme mother and he's showing her that you you do have control you do have power take it you know but um, it's because he wants he wants her to use the power the way he wants it mm -hmm. used though yes mm -hmm. certainly never yes. wants truth to have power to do with the way she feels yes yeah he wants to mm -hmm. shape how she uses it right. like you'll mm -hmm. i mean the next episode you'll see how surprised he is that she doesn't off ebony right. he's, he's disturbed by that yep. because he wants ebony gone you know what I mean? But he's putting on the show that Trudy's the one who gets to make the decisions. So what happens when Trudy makes decisions he doesn't like? He has to make sure she doesn't make decisions he doesn't like. Yep. You know? Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah, it's an illusion of her having power. Yes, but I'm she, saying. Yeah, an illusion. Of she learns real quick power. How, what power means. It's meant to be used the way he wants it to be used. Yeah. Because he's in a weird position. He's the guardian. And he's elevated both Trudy and the baby above him. So he has to both kneel at her feet and dominate Trudy so she mm -hmm. never realizes how much power she actually has. He's got to put on this show in front of everybody else that, oh no, we're all serving her. And yet he mm -hmm. needs to, Trudy never truly believes that she's free to do what she freaking wants to right. do. <laughs> If she could, she would have already left. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's it's a delicate line he has to walk with her, which is why he ends up being so abusive to her. Yep. He backhands her with one hand and gives her pearls with the other. Like, he's literally an abusive spouse. Yep. Oh, gross. Now I'm thinking of him as Trudy's spouse. Well. Ugh. <laughs> nope. 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 not having that. Cool. So that brings series two, episode 13 to a close. Thank you very much to the panel. And if you'd like to take part in a future episode of the podcast, then you can send us a message over on our Facebook page or fill out the form on our site, thetribe.co.uk. So we'll see you next time for episode 14. Until then, bye. 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 Bye.